All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Subterranean by James Rollins. Perhaps you saw my review of the first two Sigma Force novels that James Rollins did, um, Sandstorm and Map of Bones. I bought those two. Wanted to get into the Sigma Force universe. Loved it. You can see my reviews of those two books elsewhere on the channel. Just type in my last name, Durfee, and the title of the books, or James Rollins. The, the reviews will magically show up on your YouTube screen. I swear to God that they will. If you follow my directions. Anyway, so I liked the first two S Sigma Force novels. I thought I would try one of his standalone adventures. And I thought I would try his very, very first one that he wrote, Subterranean. After reading this, I've kind of figured out what James Rollins is. This came out in 1999. Um, it's kind of like big idea, big scientific idea, kind of like a Michael Crichton type of idea, wrapped into a pretty um, fun, adventurous pulp adventure that has no depth or meaning or allegory or anything to it. It's just plain, unadulterated fun with characters that are a little over the top and a little preposterous along with a story that's got a big science idea behind it, but also quite over the top and preposterous. And it's fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. Jur huge Jurassic Park type themes and just great adventure. Let's talk about the cover. We know we always just, we always uh, talk about cover design, graphic design and cover illustration. This book here, <clears throat> has one. I mean, it's got the name of the book and the uh, name of the author with some nice sort of copper colored embossed type wraps around nicely. The um, picture on the front is a little generic. It just looks like some mountains. This takes place in Antarctica. I would have liked some Antarctica-esque snowy mountains, but you know, they didn't put me in charge of cover design on this project, folks, so what can you do? Anyway, this book is subterranean. It is about big, huge caverns and caves underneath the earth. Really reminded me of a book I read a long, long time ago called The Descent by Chuck Long. I think that's the author's name. Somebody, I probably should have Googled this shit before I mentioned it, but somebody else out there Google Chuck Long and The Descent and see if there's a book out there. But it's about, it's also about big caves and caverns that are underneath us that, vast caves and caverns that hold big, huge cathedral, no, not just cathedral sized caverns, but like football stadium sized caverns, just like even bigger than that. Not only that, but maybe, maybe creatures down there we've never seen before. And maybe, maybe some sort of humanoid living down there that we haven't seen before. That's what we're getting into here. So caves creep me out. Caving, spelunking, all of that. Nope, nope, nope. When I was a kid in high school, we did some of it in Sevier County, Utah. These old gold mines above in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains above my house were riddled with caves and we would once in a while walk through them and it was, they were all death traps. They all ended in You'd, you'd walk through with your flashlight and then you, you would come to a hole in the, in, and it would just be, you'd throw a rock into it and you'd never hear the rock hit bottom. And then some moron will have put a plank across it, like a wooden plank that you could walk, like tightrope across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, fuck that, I'm out. I was out. Every single cave that we went into was like that. It had a, had a, it, I mean... They've covered them up. Since I've been in high school, they've, they've covered all those up. 
They've, you know, exploded them and buried them and covered the cave openings. and So people just can't wander in there and just disappear. Anyway. Oh, another thing. Before we get to the review, one more story. When I was in college and I was married, my ex-wife was going to go across, in Provo, Utah, where I was in college. There was these caves across Utah Lake called Nutty Putty Caves. And people would go explore these. These weren't like gold mine caves. These were like naturally formed caves that were down in the earth forever. And I'd heard that these caves were horrifying. And I told her, don't go. And she's like, no, you gotta go. We gotta go. We never do anything together. You gotta pay attention to me and come and do an adventure with me. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to those caves. She's like, fine, I'll go by myself. So she went by herself. She came back as pale as a... <laughs> She went into these caves and realized that I, what I was saying was correct, that they are up. I mean, these caves are the type of caves that you just, they will swallow a person and never, and in, into, your, into their rocky grip and never let you go. In fact, people were dying in these caves. In fact, people would get stuck in these caves and they'd just leave them. There's a movie made about these caves and I can't remember what it's called. Again, something I probably should have Googled, but it's about the Nutty Putty Cave um, misadventure where the dude got stuck upside head down in the cave and it was so tight and he couldn't get out and they just left him there. They couldn't even pull him out. They couldn't rescue him. He was wedged in so tight. And they just, they said Nutty Putty, the, the Utah official said Nutty Putty Caves no more. They filled that with cement. They filled it with cement, left every all the dead bodies down there. But good. Thank God nobody can go back in there. Anyway, this book is about caves was an off sorry we got on a tangent this book is about caves starts with ashley carter she's an anthropologist a secret service the secret service fbi cia somebody from the government wants her to go to antarctica they've got a special project for her she says well i'll only go if you let me take my son and they're kind of like eh, yeah, maybe i don't know it's uh, okay fine take your son and then they get this other guy named Benjamin Brust, who's an adventurer and a guide. And they get a team of people to go down to Antarctica because they have found this vast system of caves under the ice of Antarctica. Now, these caves, Antarctica, you'd think it would be very cold. But no, they're near the thermal, um, you know, lava stuff. So they're actually, actually hot. So um, the caves are super hot. Super, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the just the uh, humidity and the heat, everything. They get into these caves. They've taken a, a team to go into these caves. The reason the team agrees to go into the caves is because somebody's been down there before and snapped some photos, some very interesting things that are in the caves. I don't want to mention those because they are part of the plot, and I don't want to give it away. And I want you to discover, if you read this book, I want you to discover that on your own, kind of the cool stuff that they know is under there that they want this team of people to study. Then there's a lot of other things that the FBI, CAA slash government agency is not saying. There's more to the plot. And amongst the team of people that are going down is a betrayer. One of the team is going to betray the rest. Now they get down into these caverns and I'm just like freaked out. I mean, they've got Linda, who's a biologist, Khalid, who's a geologist, Major Mickelson and a bunch of Marines go down there with them. Some Navy SEALs go down there with them. I mean, this is a group of adventurers that go into these creepy, crawly, mysterious caves. And then they come across, they have a base camp down there. They've got a base camp down there. Way, two miles under the, under the surface, they've set up a base camp with, complete with Quonset huts and tents and internet and everything, you know? I mean, it's like a rig, but it's on the shores of this underground lake, which has fish in it. Among other things, among other, this thing, this book gets into alien the movie type territory, where it's just like around every bend in these caves, there's something bigger and more massive that they never thought they would see before. Just rivers that run under the earth that will swallow you up. Caverns is t three times the size of football fields. Complete, and I don't want to mention what kind of creatures they come across because that's part of the fun of, of discovering what's happening here. And the fact that they let Ashley take her son 
our little boy on the adventure, is a bad an idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. I knew as soon as they agreed to it, before they even got to Antarctica, when they were just talking to her in her house. And they're like, all right, you can go ahead and bring him. It's not a place that they just figured the kid would sit in base camp and play his Nintendo. But underneath the ground, when you're two miles under the ground, and there's things living down there, and I don't want to mention what the things are, but there's multiples types of things. And, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, let's just say it's kind of like Jurassic Park underground, but with weird, not dinosaurs, but weird, weird. Yeah. Anyway, what does the, what are the themes of this novel? What does it say about the human condition? Not a damn thing, but it was fun to read. It was absolutely fun to read. I loved it. I just hate caving. I hate people that go into caves. I don't like caves. I don't want to go into them myself. Like I said, I don't know why I hate people that do it. There are some YouTube channels, and I started watching them, of people that go into these caves, and they go so deep, and they wedge themselves in, and they can't get out, and they, and they take their kids with them. And I'm just like, oh, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. And I don't know why I keep watching them. Because I hate the people that are doing it. I hate the whole notion of it. And maybe that's why I like this book so much, because it just it's one of my, I guess one of my fears is caving, spelunking. I remember those old gold mines from when I was a kid. And how I'm probably lucky to be alive, because I probably should have fallen into a crevasse and uh, <clears throat> died at the bottom of it. Anyway, I love this book. 9.5 out of 10. I absolutely loved it.